Hello everybody, Ryan here, or MNR Productions, with a comparison I have been absolutely dying to make, and that is of every LEGO at, -AT ever made, starting in 2003 all the way to 2020. This comparison will not count both poly bags, foil bags, mini sets, micro fighters, and definitely not this monstrosity. I'll be using my comparison system and I've actually added a category for this comparison and hopefully all comparisons going forward will contain the fan category. You guys have voted on a poll on my YouTube community page. YouTube recently took away polls that I would usually put on these videos that let you guys vote and so you could see exactly what other people were thinking during the video. Unfortunately, that's been taken away. So I'm doing it on my community tab. You guys voted and I'll have that in this video near the end. You can see exactly how all of the fans of my channel voted on these AT-ATs and that will have some sway on who wins. So you guys get a say in which AT-AT -AT is the best in this video. I think that's pretty cool. Before we get into all the categories, I wanna go over some general information about each set so that we all have the same base of knowledge. I also fortunately have all of the boxes for these sets. So I'll be able to show you all of the boxes for these sets as we go through this general info. This is set 4483 from 2003. It was the first real play scale at, -AT with 1,000 64 pieces for minifigs and it retailed for a hundred bucks adjusted for inflation you're looking at about a hundred and forty dollars 2007 brought us a motorized walking at, -AT one of the few motorized lego star wars sets we have ever seen it was set number 10178 with 1137 pieces it also had four minifigs and retailed for a hundred and thirty dollars adjusted for inflation you're looking at about a hundred and sixty bucks and i also want to note here up front this is probably the least comparable set to the other four. The other four are just play sets. This one was completely conceptually different and it was even given a UCS set number 10178. I believe it was intended to basically be a UCS ATAT -AT at the time, although it's not something a lot of people would really consider to be UCS or what they're looking for in what hopefully one day would be a UCS ATAT. -AT. 2010 set 8129 ATAT -AT Walker included 815 pieces with eight total minifigures. It retailed for 110 bucks, adjusted for inflation. That's about $130 in today's money. And another interesting tidbit about this particular set is that it was actually a Toys R Us exclusive. 2014 saw an interesting downsize in the box, but the piece count went up considerably. Set number 75054 included 1,137 pieces, notably exactly the same as the 2007 motorized model, pure coincidence, five minifigs and retailed for just like the 2010 model, $110 adjusted for inflation. That's about 120 bucks in today's money. And finally, the newest, latest and greatest at, -AT from 2020 given set number 75288 included 1,267 pieces with six minifigures and retailed for 160 bucks. No inflation adjustment because we're filming this literally as the set came out. There are a lot of similar minifigures in each set starting out in 2003 you got a luke skywalker at, -AT pilot and a couple of snowtroopers in that older snowtrooper style of course still 2003 you got the yellow head luke chrome lightsaber though was the plus on that side so decent figure selection in 2003 just obviously compared to what else we have may not really stack up too well 2007 added in general veers albeit not super accurate to the scene it was still nice to finally get a general veers minifigure i wish they had done it in 2003 though because i think it would have looked interesting with that yellow head but very similar looking selection just with general veers added in a little bit better looking atat -AT driver overall just a better selection of figures minus a snow trooper but it was also the motorized version so you didn't really have places to put many figures so the lack of figures kind of made sense 2010 really brought a lot to the table with eight total minifigures a couple of snow troopers and at, -AT driver and general veers of course you got a rebel trooper c3po han solo and luke skywalker to boot luke skywalker definitely better than the two previous renditions much more detailed helmet on solo a nice touch you get another named character in there the general veer is an improvement but still not perfection as we're kind of working towards and of course that at, -AT driver with the newer style helmet that came about in i think 2009 so the older ones did not have that helmet you saw a lot of improvements in that way, still using the older Snow Trooper though there. 2014 though did bring in three of the newer style Snow Troopers, an AT-AT driver in a newer style, 
or more appropriately newer color scheme. And then General Veers, again, kind of a similar scheme with the colors there. They kind of change from these light and dark grays to adding in a little bit more of a, a bluish tone to it. But only five figures may leave a sour taste in some people's mouth coming off the eight from the set prior. And then in 2020, we have six figures with a couple newer snowtroopers, a couple at, -AT drivers, which is perfectly accurate to what you see in the at, -AT. And then General Veers, which is like perfection reached here like they've got it down now with the goggles on top of the helmet it looks great like that and then the newer luke skywalker looking so much better albeit the quality of the print on his torso something i mentioned in my review just isn't quite there for some reason in this set you'll also see double-sided faces on these newer characters and the stormtrooper heads underneath are unique versus if we look at the underside of the older ones you kind of get the angry clone face or in the case of like even the older ones it's all black heads the newer snowtroopers all kind of have unique looks these snowtrooper heads are being reused from other characters in the lego portfolio but i don't see that as a big deal myself it's just nice to have some changing up from the angry clone faces of old to me 2003 has the worst figure selection it could have been better if there was a couple more snowtroopers in the set to help fill out the seats in the cabin of the atat -AT. the second worst figure selection goes to 2007 i think that in general the selection is better albeit still the same number of figures i just i, I like the variety in figures and of course getting general viewers even though he's not super accurate is definitely a nice thing Thing. The third best figure selection is going to go to 2014. I actually really like that you get three snowtroopers. The General Veers getting close to perfect there, but I think that 2010 definitely going to beat that out with eight total figures. It's hard to argue with it. Looking at it next to 2015, it's hard to argue that 2010 is not better than 2014 to me. I just, I think that that's pretty clear to me. I think I would trade the uh, slightly more detailed and accurate figures for the number of figures in this set. However, I would not make that same trade when you're looking at six total figures here that actually make a lot more sense to me getting the two at, -AT drivers that fit in the set and everything so the 2020 set is going to get the most points as the best figure selection to me and 2010 is going to come in second place and receive four points for its figure selection overall though i think every at, -AT offers great figures and just enough kind of everything at least meets the bare minimum for a set and it doesn't really leave you too disappointed but i still wish there were a few more snow troopers in those early days to kind of bolster out the set Figuring out which set has the best playability may be a bit tough, but hey, we're going to give it a shot here. Starting out with the heads of every ATAT, -AT, each set does fit at least one minifigure. 2003, you could open up and place an ATAT -AT driver in. 2007, it's going to be much of the same, but they did add a little bit of space to have General Veers at the back. You can see 2003 only had the one. 2010, if we can get that open, again, back to our original there with only one figure inside. Very disappointing to see that, especially given that this set had General Veers in it. I don't know why they weren't able to do it. Obviously, the design probably just constrained that, but yeah, this set had the General Veers and it just doesn't fit in there. 2014 was a slight upgrade, although as you can see, it's a very tight fit, and not that any of them aren't a tight fit, I think all of them are a tight fit, but it did include general viewers. You can see there's a lot more space, or at least it looks like there'd be a lot more space than there is. They made it a pretty strong design, so that's why it's so tight, but that's basically the 2014 one. And then 2020 allowed you to have three figures, which is great for kids wanting to have some fun play and have the most accurate scene to episode five, The Empire Strikes Back on the Battle of Hoth. So that is all of the heads opened up. You can see the mechanisms for all of that. All pretty good, actually, as far as like for kids playing with it, that's gonna be something that shouldn't fall off or break apart too easily. And they can all hold themselves up, which is great. As far as stuff from the Rebel side, the only set with anything like that is the Hoth dish shirt in the 2010 at, -AT. So that's a nice thing to have to counter that set for kids having some imaginative play. Older style at, -AT heads did not have any built-in play functions. The 2007 one did have moving cannons, which I guess could count as something like that. 2010 was pretty dull in that regard for play features but I do like the look of it. 2014 has some spring-loaded shooters worked in underneath, as does 2020. So as far as like the placement of that, you can decide which one you like better, but they both are equal on that front for their play features up underneath the head. Let's move into the body of the set. 
2003's version of the ATAT -AT does have a little spot for Luke to hang on to by a thread here down underneath the ATAT. -AT. So that's a nice little feature built into the bottom of it. You can open up the side panels on either side relatively easily to reveal your seating. In this case, it can be pulled out on either side to reveal some pretty nice seats and areas for your snow troopers. Flipping this around, you'll see it's the exact same on the other side of the set. Same exact seating arrangement, two seats. Unfortunately, only two snow troopers to fill those four total seats. I think it's also worth noting while I'm up in this area that the connection between the neck and the body of the set is not very strong. I've had this fall off multiple times on me. So kids actually, you can see I just pushed it back. It had come loose just from general movement. Kids could probably uh, break this pretty easily just from a play side of things. That's not great. The back panels on the ATAT -AT can actually open up and you're actually going to be able to store and actually in this case, we'll be removing the little speeder bike for your snow troopers in the set. You can get a snow trooper on there and riding it around. This ATAT, -AT, like all of the other ATATs, has posable legs so you can kind of change the posing around as you please to kind of be whatever you want. But this is kind of my typical display pose, so that's what I'm keeping it as. As far as built-in play features for your characters, I find 2007 to be a little bit more limited. You do have Luke Skywalker hanging by a thread again down underneath. There's nothing built in underneath for him to swipe at or anything, but he's down there. The interior of the set is non-existent because it's all built of Technic and has this little yellow switch. That little yellow switch, of course, allows this 2007 ATAT -AT to literally walk, which may be the best play feature you could come up with, right? It also does have a handle on top, which you can pick the setup with very easily. Love the handle. I think that's greatly integrated into the top, although maybe it takes away from some of the cleanliness of the design that all the other sets have on top, but this is great. It literally walks. It can also walk backwards. I, I don't see how that is not the ultimate play feature in an ATAT. -AT. 2010 suffers from a pretty major couple issues here. First off, Luke Skywalker is not hanging by a string. He's hanging by this, like, I don't know, circus piece, and it's not great. It's, like, just so different than the other ones, and I don't like it at all. It's stiff. He's hanging out of, like, the side of this, so you have to put it on something that you don't want to put it on. Also, these tend to break off. Like, it's just not a very great connection here, or at least over time, mine have become really tight and then that causes that. So that's not good for kids. The uh, the next two models actually have that problem more or less solved because they have designs which are impervious to wear and tear like that. You can see how Luke is on this thing which is attached to actually a really nice little area inside the set where you can store your snow troopers and a couple of characters. And also has a really neat control panel there where you can see the Hoth shield generator. Apparently I'm missing a cheese slope. I'll have to fix that. But that's just not great to have Luke hanging on to that section. I don't particularly like that, but we'll throw that back in there. You can try to close this back down. Like I said, just always wants to fall off. That's not great, but that's really all the interior space there does. Ultimately though, this one tends to be a bit lacking as far as play features built into and onto the AT-AT. -AT. They even left a lot of empty space at the back here. There's just a big empty room in there that they didn't make use of. And do I have to explain that the legs move just like the old ones? Like all the legs move, except the 2007 one, I guess, because that's motorized Technic. These you cannot pose unless you turn it on and have the motor run and then you have to like stop it at the perfect spot to have it pose like you want. 2014, like I said, was impervious to wear and tear on these side panels because they didn't have any like thing that connected that could like become broken down over time. It was literally just these Technic pin pieces and they open right up. On the inside, it was a little bit disappointing to see that the snow troopers didn't really have much room to stand on. Now that is because they did make room for a little play feature with a trap door here in the center. I'm gonna show you in a moment, but you know, they gave them this very minimal space and that's disappointing. But again, that was at the cost of having this trap door, which I'm about to show you exactly how it works. There's this little piece on the back here. And if we pull that, it'll let the trap door go and down, well, there we go, down comes the snow trooper. I guess I had him lodged in there. Day two, we'll give it another shot here. Down comes the snow trooper. And welcome to the 2020 ATAT -AT school of how to be the best ATAT -AT with play functions other than motorization. So the Luke Skywalker looks like he's just hanging by a thread, right? And I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably watched my review of this set at this point. But if we go to the top of the set and we lift up this panel here, you can see there's actually a little knob in there and there's a lot of string there. I wonder what that does. If we push on that knob, you can raise and lower Luke Skywalker. Of course, he's got a lightsaber. I kind of attached the thermal detonator to the bottom of the lightsaber. Usually you could hold it in one hand or the other, but he can't hold three things at once in this case. So you can have him be 
hoisted up to the belly of the AT-AT, -AT, and in the belly of the AT-AT, -AT, there's actually this little compartment here, which you can kind of reenact him cutting open the AT-AT -AT and then throwing in the thermal detonator, and then of course the AT-AT -AT blows up after that. The side panels for this AT-AT -AT open out and then up, and you'll notice there are two snow troopers, yet five seats for snow troopers in this set. So a little bit of extra space than you may need, but it's nice to have everything in like the accurate color and everything. They even have the E-Web blaster in here for your snow troops. So that's pretty nice to have in the set. And it's great that it stores up inside of the set. So when kids are done playing with it, they can kind of have everything in one place. So we can close it up. You may have noticed a little speeder bike peeking through there. And that's because if we open up this back section, we'll be able to pull out a speeder bike. And much like with the version from 2003 here, you can take a snow trooper and plop him on. The set with the best playability is absolutely the 2007 motorized AT-AT. -AT. You literally cannot be at a set that literally moves on its own. I just remember so much fun being had with myself and my little cousin, Corey, especially when he was way younger. Um, with that set, really hard to beat that out. Like a set that literally does all the work for a kid. Like I, I just can't fathom a set better than that as far as a play function. It literally moves. 2020 really nailed it as well though, minus the fact that it doesn't move. It does have a lot of things built in very nicely and that Luke function is wonderful. Getting three points was 2003's 4483 ATAT. -AT. It pretty much matches the 2020 version. However, it doesn't have that winch for Luke Skywalker. Other than that, it's pretty on point. I guess it's also missing those spring-loaded shooters, but that's to be expected for 2003, I guess. 2010 gets two points for second to worst playability. I thought the imaginative play of having all the figures versus just the added little trap door on the 2014 version meant that the 2010 version should be better as far as play goes. So that's what our scoring looks like after two rounds. Let's move on to the design and display. Design and display wise, I would say any of these sets look fine on display on their own. It becomes kind of a problem when you combo some of them because they have such drastically different looks as you can tell that they start to make the other ones look weird. And that's where I kind of say, hey, if you already got an AT-AT -AT and you're, you're just looking for one to display, you might want to stay away from picking up more because like they, they do look weird next to each other. I don't know if that's something you guys picked up on, but that's something that I just kind of think myself. The 2003 set is kind of the outcast too. It used the older Lego grays while as the newer models use the newer Lego Grays. And so while it looks fine on its own, when you put it next to the other sets with newer light gray, and that goes for any set with newer light gray, if you put it next to ATSC, it's still gonna look funky because the older grays on Lego look very weird next to the newer ones, in my opinion. I think that's kind of the consensus opinion that a lot of people share. The other things about the design of the set, while it does look good, it's got a hefty, heavy look to it. It is very weak in a lot of ways. It doesn't have the building techniques of newer sets. And you can kind of see some blue up underneath it, just in places you wouldn't want to see so much blue. So that's a very 2003 building thing. And unfortunately, that set just didn't really knock it out of the park. Although it does have a printed element there and nice printed elements for the armor plating on the side. 2007 saw more of the same with those printed armor plating pieces on the side. However, it was a much different design. You can see it rides a little bit lower. It looks a little bit wider. It's probably ultimately the least accurate looking AT-AT because it really gives up that form for the function that it has. And I think that's fine. Like that was really a worthwhile investment. It still looks like an AT-AT, -AT. it looks fine. But when you put it next to these other ones, you start to see its discrepancy in look compared to what would be considered accurate to in universe for an AT-AT. -AT. So that's where that one kind of falls apart. But it's also a really strong build with so much technic integrated into it. You can look at it versus a 2003 set and it's like, okay, that has a much stronger design. That's great for that. 2010 brought, in my opinion, a much more accurate design than 2007, and it looks pretty sweet. It's actually the, the lowest piece count of any of the AT-ATs, but I think it still brings a lot to the table. Maybe a little bit chunky on the sides there, much like we'll see in 2014. Some of those plating just doubles up and looks a little chunky, but ultimately it's fine, I guess. The head on that uses a sticker. No other set uses a sticker for the head. Oddly enough, the sticker is also like on a white, background? I don't know. Don't really know what was going on there because none of the other sets represent anything like that at all. 2014 brings another strong design to the table and 2020 ultimately is going to bring the most accurate design. It's also the tallest of the sets and on top of that it's like skinnier. I don't know how else to explain it but I know at the top right it runs eight across and all the sets basically run eight across. 
and you would say, oh, but it's the same width, blah, blah, blah. They do run it across at the top, but you can see if you like look off to the side here, you can see it's just a plate and down. In this case, it's like three plates and down. In this case, it's one plate and down, but still at the bottom, it goes to two plates. That one stays kind of the one plate the whole time. These get thicker and thicker as well. So you kind of see the point where this model is actually skinnier. And if you do get it in hand and put it next to any of these, you'll immediately notice it. It was something that I noticed as soon as I finished it, that uh, as far as the design goes, it is skinnier, but that's pretty accurate. Like having a much more drastic slope, having a different kind of curvature to these panels versus the older ones see how much more curved in these are versus these ones which are just a, a much more nuanced slant to them so they definitely did a lot in the way of accuracy with the newer model however it does look like it's squinting and the other ones definitely don't have that and I don't think an ATAT -AT really looks like it's squinting so can't say I really appreciate that look ultimately though this may come down to personal preference for a lot of people as to which one you would rather have on your shelf or which design you prefer I think it's obvious that building techniques have improved over 20 years and that the newest set would have the best, the latest and greatest pieces and building techniques to create the strongest design. And I think that holds true here. The 2020 model is the most accurate ATAT -AT I think that we have ever seen. I'm gonna give it the full five points and give it number one here in the design category. After that, I think it gets a bit muddy. I wanna say 2003, but the building techniques and coloring of the bricks really throw me off. But I think I wanna go with 2014 as second best. This is by far the hardest one for me to pick out here with the design and display because this one looks great it just has a lot of weaknesses in its design as far as like the building goes but it looks good I don't know I'm really really torn on this and I'm just tempted to call it all a, a draw as far as accuracy to the real in-universe ATAT -AT goes we're gonna go with this order that got first place already second place to 2003 third place to 2004, fourth place to 2010, and fifth place to 2007. I think that's the fairest way to do it. It's a tough comparison to do. Quick refresher on the prices adjusted for inflation in today's money. You're looking at $140, $160, $130, $120, and $170. In $160 there for the newest ATAT. -AT. So all things being equal, if you were to walk into a store and you could buy any of these on the shelf for their inflation adjusted prices, which set provided the best value? 2014. 120 bucks in today's money is an absolute steal for a set like this, I think. It is killer, and I think that that price is just immaculate for what you're getting. I'm going to call it a tie for the second best value with the motorized ATAT -AT and the newer 2020 ATAT. -AT. While they're both fundamentally different things, I recognize the value of a motorized function and how much that would cost to put into a set, but I also really love the love that was put into the newer set and all the functionality that is packed into it along with the side vehicles and minifigure detail. It's just really good in both those ways. So those are going to end up being tied. The next best value is going to go to 2003 at 140 bucks in today's money. It's a pretty monstrous build for that amount of money. It just lacks some minifigs. It could have been better, I think, if it had more minifigs there as far as value goes. And then the worst value set, while it does have a ton of figures, it just is the smallest ATAT -AT with only 815 pieces. Every other ATAT -AT is well over a thousand pieces. And I know I reiterate a lot price for pieces and everything and it's not but it definitely shows as far as the size goes like you can tell that there are 200 pieces missing there and at 130 bucks you got to look at it like that costs ten dollars cheaper adjusted for inflation and it's substantially bigger and you know the figures again is where the difference really is in that set but still i mean even that one it's going to be ten dollars more and you're getting a way bigger atat -AT versus that i don't know i just feel like that that is the main difference there and as much as i like that 2010 version i have a lot of nostalgia for it i can see this objectively having the worst value. So which ATAT -AT do I think and do you think was the best? I did a poll on my channel and after three hours it had received 8,000 votes, which I think is a pretty large sample. 75% of the vote went to the 2020 ATAT. -AT. That's what you guys thought was the best and actually it is what I thought was the best too. So it will be receiving five points from me and five points from you. The 2014 ATAT -AT received 7% of the vote from y'all, which was good for it. Three points from you guys. I gave it two points as my second to worst ATAT. -AT. You guys kind of picked it as the middle of the ground. My middle of the ground was right here in 2010. However, y'all only gave it 3% of the vote, which was good for fourth place in the ATAT. -AT lineup. 13% of you voted for the 2007 ATAT, -AT, which was good for the second best 
AT-AT. I also voted for it as my second best AT-AT, so four points from me and four points from you. A measly 2% of you voted for the 2003 AT-AT, which is kind of sad to me. It's a set that I idealized for a long time, but have also come to the same conclusion as you, that it's just not as good as the rest of them and is the worst AT-AT. So unfortunate. It was a set that I loved to look at, but once I built it and had it in hand, I, I don't love it anymore. So worst ATAT. -AT. That is all the voting, all the numbers, and everything scored. Let's take a look at the final scores. To wrap things up here in first place with 28 points, the 2020 ATAT. -AT. In second place with 20 total points, the 2007 ATAT -AT with motorized walking functions seems pretty fitting. In third place with 17 points, the 2014 All Empire edition of the ATAT. -AT. In fourth place, the 2010 ATAT -AT with the most figures that we actually ever saw in ATAT -AT with 14 points there. Again, 2010 model. And in last place, dead last, fifth place, bar none. This is the worst AT-AT -AT set they've ever put out, at least out of these five. I guess we could count, you know, polybags and things, and we could have that conversation, but that's not a conversation I'm willing to have with only 12 points to 2003 AT-AT. -AT. So that is your results for my AT-AT -AT comparison. There's a look at the score sheet if you want to do your own counting, make sure everything's right. It is kind of cool that it lined up perfectly with your fan votes. Anyway, if you enjoyed the comparison, a like is greatly appreciated. You can leave your opinion on these sets down in the comments section below. I'm curious what you guys think. And if you enjoyed the comparison, subscribe to the channel. You'll get more. I have plenty of videos like this on the channel and more to come in the future. And if you do want to see more LEGO Star Wars comparisons, you can check them out on the end screen now.